One of my worst moments was when I had an accident downstairs. I slipped and I ended up wedged in between the wall and the door. I'm just a burden, and I know I'm doing this to them because I won't stop eating. Love you. Drive safe. It wasn't in my vocabulary, you know. I always tried to give them what they wanted when I could. So Food is my only escape from the misery I have. Welcome, everyone, to the epic saga of James and his battle against the beast of binge eating. It's a story of pain, hope, and the incredible journey towards a life-changing transformation. So sit tight, because this ride through ups, downs, and drive is nothing short of a blockbuster. Pain can make you give up completely. Your pain can make you start over again. It's totally up to you. In the beginning of the story, there's a big decision to make either give up or begin again. James, the main character, feels weighed down by years of difficulty, and his knees ache with every step he takes. It's depressing. My knees are just ache. Joints like they just grinding. Try not to move about as much as I can. I just get out of breath. Feel like I'm gonna pass out. My mom treats me like I'm helpless. Go on, Bella. A lot of people do. It just makes me feel like I'm useless. As the story progresses, we see James's everyday life unfolding. His mom wakes him up each morning and he starts his day. Even though he feels sad and his body hurts, having an egg for breakfast gives him a little comfort. But his life is a struggle. His mom and others see him as unable to do things, which makes him feel even worse about himself. I ended up wedged in between the wall and the door. Actually, he was 700 pounds at that time. And he screams to me, Mama, help me, help me. I'm, I'm hung. I couldn't pick him up. Fire department had to come in there and bust the wall in. I was screaming because the pain was so bad. We are transported to James's childhood, a time when he was innocent and carefree, before the burden of weight started to affect him. He started off as a thin child, but as he grew into a teenager, he began to gain weight. This journey into obesity started slowly and got worse over time. It was fueled by his job, which kept him sitting at a desk for long hours, surrounded by stress and fast food. James wasn't overweight as a baby. He was kind of skinny or thin. He started gaining a little bit. He went from a slim to a size 12 husky, just almost overnight. In middle school, I guess I was probably about 200. Uh, and then when I was probably about 16, I was about 280. After college, he went to work as an accountant. We explore James's unhealthy relationship with fast food, a seductive siren that sings to James on his way home from work, offering comfort with no strings attached, except for the calories, guilt, and isolation that come free with every meal. I threw the fast food probably about five to six times a week. Yeah, I would like to get a foot long, a uh, quarter pound coney with uh, cheddar peppers, please. After I get off work, fast food is the easiest thing. We get a glimpse into how the family interacts. James's mom, who loves to cook, unintentionally adds to his addiction by making meals filled with love and lots of calories. When James goes to the doctor, they find out something shocking. He weighs 750 pounds. This number surprises and upsets everyone, showing the complicated bond between mother and son and the connection between love and food. And I say something, well, I already had something to eat. Well, why did you eat this? Well, you cooked it. I remember about four or five years ago, I went to the doctor. And they brought these big scales in and I uh, stepped on them. And my first thought was, can't be. We find out about the family's long battle with weight, a problem that has affected them for generations. James sees his father and sister suffer from health problems related to their weight, which now threatens him too. It's a serious reminder of what might happen if he doesn't make changes to his life. Our family history. My dad struggled with his weight. When he passed away, he was in the mid 400s. It hurt him when his daddy died, but when his sister died, six months later, 
James almost lost it. Him and her were almost like twins. Doctors said weight caused my dad and my sister's problems. We learn the tragic tale of the hospital bed, an ominous symbol of loss and despair that has cradled the lives and deaths of James's loved ones. Now, it supports James, a stark reminder of the ticking clock against his life. We have the hospital bed in there that my husband was using it. When he passed away, my daughter moved to that bed because she said, Mama, I'm going to sleep in here. I can rest better on this bed. But after she passed away, my son has taken the bed. When he took the bed over, I thought, what is this? Is he the next in line? James faces a crucial moment in his appointment with Dr. Now. Here, he confronts the harsh reality of his situation. At 730 pounds, surgery is a distant dream on a road paved with discipline and diet. James suddenly realizes that he might not live longer than his father, which shocks him deeply. This realization sparks a strong determination in him to change his life story. Okay. We're going to go right this way. I thought it would be a whole lot less. Hello. Hello. James, I'm back in his garden. James. Nice to meet you, Doctor. I'm Maggie. I'm his brother. So there you have it. James's journey is more than just a quest for weight loss. It's a fight for life, a battle to break free from the chains of his past and the habits that bind him. With every bite, every tear, and every step towards Houston, James moves closer to the light at the end of the tunnel, proving that even in the darkest times, hope can thrive. But he's over 700 pounds. He's very high risk for surgery. You can't have surgery when you're 730 pounds. So we need to make changes on your diet. It's pretty shocked when he said that I wouldn't live to be as old as my dad. I'm not wanting to leave my mom alone because I know it'd be hard on her. Welcome to the epic saga of a culinary roller coaster. We're diving deep into the heart of cravings, emotions, and the journey of a lifetime. We kick off with our main star battling the endless waves of hunger where stop is a foreign concept. It's a tale of love, support, and a bit too much enabling from the sidelines. Yes, folks, we've got a classic case of the yes syndrome with a sprinkle of regret for extra flavor. I think when you come accustomed to eating so much, you don't know how to stop. It became a pattern for me. If she wanted it, I would get it. No wasn't in my vocabulary, you know. I. I always tried to give them what they wanted when I could. I, I'm going to say most of the time I, I'll give in. Food becomes the ultimate escape from the blues. It's like a magic carpet ride, except every bite brings our hero closer to a reality check they're not ready for. With every snack and meal, the love-hate relationship with food deepens, painting a bittersweet picture of joy shadowed by the looming threat to health. Only escape from the misery I have. You know, once I start, I don't want to stop, so eat as much as I want. Well, I eat as much as I can, and I love it. I love everything about it, except how I know it's killing me. In the next part of the story, we're transported back to the carefree days of childhood, only to encounter a surprising turn of events involving family troubles and financial difficulties. It's a transition from happiness to hardship. In all the trouble, food becomes a quiet but strong support. I was a happy, fun, loving kid. Those were happy times. And I felt like we had a happy family too then. Growing up, it was just me and my brother and my mom. And my earlier years, we didn't have money to take care of the house, pay the rent. And I found out later that my dad had got addicted to drugs. Then they sweep us off to Texas, a new start with old habits tagging along for the ride. It's a tale of loneliness, where food becomes the companion, the comforter, the friend in a world of strangers. Our hero's weight journey begins here, a silent countdown to a future they never imagined. Lived in Texas, and he told my mom he would help her start over. Me, my brother, and my mom. But you know, as a kid, it was very hard. I didn't know anyone, so food became all I had for a while. 
Denial becomes the new norm, with happiness masking the growing concern for health. It's a love story between a mother and her child, where food becomes the silent enemy, quietly shaping a path of regret and guilt. I ignored it because I was happy when she was happy. I knew that the food was hurting her. I really did. A lot. Because I really didn't know what to do myself. Fast forward where growth isn't just about getting older, but also about the scale tipping to alarming numbers. College dreams turn into a homecoming, not for joy, but to face the harsh truth of addiction within the family. As I got older, of course, the weight went up. And so in junior high, I was probably about 250. And so by the time I graduated, I know I was in the 300s. So I was bigger, but my weight didn't feel like it was out of control then or that it was really holding me back at that point. And in this part of the story, we face the truth of being by ourselves. Food, once a source of comfort, becomes something we rely on too much when we're lonely. Then love comes into the picture with Victor. And for a while, we find happiness and make a new family. But sadly, that happiness doesn't last. Go to California, I felt sad, I felt alone because my brother was in college, my mother was in California, and I was back here in Wichita Falls, Texas by myself. And by the time I was 19, I was just over 350 then. And I could still function and do things without too much trouble. Love's light shines bright, but it's not enough to keep the shadows of growing weight at bay. Victor's unconditional love paints a picture of true affection, untainted by the societal standards of beauty. Very loving man. I loved him very much, and I just enjoyed him. It was a very happy time in my life. And when I was with him was when I had my three children. Next, we see our hero reaching a weight they never thought possible. It's a chapter of love, loss, and the harsh reality that food has become more than just sustenance. It's an addiction, a challenge, a battle to be fought. 100 pounds over those years, by the time I was 22. But even though I was getting bigger, Victor never ever commented about my weight. Trying to go back to school so I could have a career he was working, he had started a job where he was working overnight. Fast forward through the years, life throws a curveball with Victor's tragic departure. Grief becomes the new companion, with food as the only comfort, leading our hero down a path of further despair and isolation. So I think we just basically grew apart, but we never lost our friendship. And he was still very involved with our children. So it wasn't a bad breakup. But what caused me to spiral after that was a couple of years later when he died tragically. Next, we unfold as a desperate cry for change, a realization that life's at a crossroads with grandkids and dreams of a better future dangling like a carrot on a stick. It's a battle against the very thing that once brought comfort, a fight for life, for the chance to play an active role in the lives of those they love. But it's hard for her, you know, with her being that size, you know, she would like to help more, but she just can't. You place the order? Yes. All right. And a family okra, some chocolate chip cookies with it. Oh, okay. So there you have it, everyone. A tale of struggles, of battles both won and lost, and the undying hope for a second chance. It's not just about the food. It's about reclaiming life. One step, one bite, one day at a time. So I know. Something has to change. I have to change. If I don't do something different, I could very well die because I am drowning myself with the food. And I know I am definitely at a crossroad and I have to do something now. We're diving into a tale of hunger, love, and a battle that's bigger than the buffet table. The beginning opens with a heartfelt plea from the heart of our kitchen. Bring me a plate, echoes through the house, but it's more than just a call for food. It's a cry for help. Our hero is stuck, feeling like nothing more than a burden to her family, trapped in a cycle of eating that she just can't break. Despite her love and apologies, she's caught in a whirlpool of cravings she doesn't know how to escape. Bring me um, plates and my oranges out of the refrigerator. I'm not a mom to them right now. 
I'm just a burden. And I know I'm doing this to them because I won't stop eating. I've told all of them I'm sorry that I've let myself get into the situation. Flashback to when she was three and the world already labeled her as fat. But back then, food wasn't the enemy. It was just food. With a dad out of the picture and a mom who equated food with love, our hero learned early that food was more than sustenance. It was a hug, a kiss, a silent, I love you. Years old, when other kids started calling me fat, and I started to realize just how big I was. I didn't even associate food with my weight then. I was too young to understand that fully. She never said it, she never hugged me or kissed me, but what she would do is feed us. Fast forward, and the pattern of eating for comfort, for love, becomes a lifestyle. High school graduation becomes a moment of embarrassment, not pride, as the realization hits. She's different, and not in a way society embraces. Enter Elroy, the knight in shining armor who sees her for who she is, not the number on the scale. Together they dream of a big family, adopting kids in need of love and a home, building a life filled with joy but shadowed by an ever-growing challenge. So I kept gaining and I just kept getting bigger. When I graduated high school, I was pushing 350 and they did not have a gown to fit me. I was so embarrassed. Shortly after that, I met my husband, Elroy. Because by that time, I was over 400 pounds. I guess we kind of hit it off <laughs> right off the bat. As the chapters unfold, we see a family doing their best to navigate a world where food is both a savior and a sin. The kids, stepping up to the plate, literally become the caregivers, shopping, cooking, and shouldering responsibilities far beyond their years. They're caught in a tug of war between loving their mom and fearing for her life. Hannah, I need you to come let's go on this grocery list, please. They have to run all the errands and do everything. Mama, I love you. Bye, Mama, I love you, baby. Mama, I love you. <laughs> Mostly all the grocery shopping now. Because my dad can't walk in stores. Elroy, watching the love of his life disappear under the weight of her struggles, feels helpless. Food, once a source of joy and connection, becomes a weapon of self-destruction. Our hero lies awake at night, haunted by the thought of leaving her children behind. A future without her presence. A looming specter they all try to ignore. You know, we bring her the food because we love her, but I know we're harming her. So basically, I kind of blame myself. Green beans not as good. Parmesan cheese is good. I don't think I cooked enough, though, but... I love Miller a hell of a lot. Over to death, which is basically what I'm doing. I'm killing my wife. As we reach the climax, it's clear. This is a battle for life. Each bite of food is a step closer to a tragic end. Each plea from her children a reminder of what's at stake. They're a family bound by love, but divided by a challenge that seems insurmountable. I know, Ma, why do you do that? Go and pick up my pizza right now. I think I'll let you know. No, right now. Go right. get the pizza right now. I know I'm killing myself. I feel like I'm just out of control with my eating habits. Oh. And I know every time I take a bite of food, it's getting me that much closer to death. So there you have it, a story not just of struggle, but of strength, love, and the undying hope for a brighter tomorrow. It's a reminder that behind every battle with the scale lies a deeper fight for happiness, health, and the chance to live life to the fullest. Will our hero find her way out of this maze of meals and make a change for her sake and her family's? Only time will tell, but one thing's for sure. This is a journey we're all rooting for her to win. If she ever passed away, she wants me to uh, take her to the kids. None of us wants to lose our parents, and it really hurts to know that they don't get the update they get. They will pass, and we don't want to lose them. I think she's trying to kill herself with food. And I'm worried that she's not going to make it. I don't want to die like this. This is not the memory that I want for my children to have. All aboard the hype train, my friends. We're about to embark on a journey filled with hopes, fears, and packed bags as we follow our hero on her quest to Houston for a chance at a new life. 
This isn't just any road trip, it's the road to transformation, and every mile is packed with emotion, anxiety, and the power of family love. Today, me and my family are packing up all my stuff to move to Houston so I can try to get on Dr. Now's program to lose weight. And it's making me feel really anxious because so many things could go wrong on the road. So the scene is set, bags are being zipped, boxes are being tapped, and the air is thick with anticipation. Our hero, along seat to her trusty brother and Uncle Ben, is gearing up for the big move. It's not just a change of scenery, it's a leap of faith. Leaving behind friends, familiarity, and the comfort of home, our hero is stepping into the unknown, all with the hope of getting on Dr. Now's program. The clock's ticking, the pressure's mounting, and the anxiety? Oh, it's through the roof! And start bringing the boxes out. Okay, just try and get as much done as you can while I take the tubs out and put them in the trailer first. Okay, sounds good. This is a sacrifice for my girls, too. They're having to leave all their friends and their life here to do this with me. As they hustle to load up the trailer, it's clear this isn't just any trip. It's a mission. A mission for a chance at a healthier, happier life. The stakes? Sky high. The risk? Worth every bit. Because when you're fighting for your life, every step forward is a victory. Our empty place is making it sink in that we're doing this. And my brother's had to rearrange his whole life to get ready for this too moving halfway across the country just to try to get help for me. But let's not forget the emotional toll. Saying goodbye to their little house, the only home the kids have known, is a moment filled with tears and heartache. Our hero, torn between the joy of a new beginning and the sadness of leaving her mother, finds solace in a heartfelt hug and a promise to keep in touch. It's a reminder that no matter how far we go, family ties bind us together, through thick and thin. We're here to say goodbye. So you're off and running to Texas now? Um, uh, yeah. We just came to say bye. Okay. Um, but what do you think you're going to get there? Probably next week. All right, I love you. Give me huggies. Mm -hmm. uh, you need to come give your grandmother loves and uh. Yeah, please. Fast forward and they're on the outskirts of Houston. The excitement of arrival is overshadowed by pain, both physical and emotional. After hours on the road, our hero is in agony, longing for nothing more than a comfortable bed to rest. But fate has other plans, throwing one last obstacle their way. A room on the third floor. For someone battling with her size, this isn't just an inconvenience. It's a mountain. The room wasn't supposed to be on the third floor. I don't do third floors. I can't at my size. And if I try, with me either hurt, stuck, or even both. The fear of elevators, the dread of stairs, and the reality of her physical limitations come crashing down, turning what should be the final stretch into a nightmare. It's a harsh reminder of the challenges she faces, not just in getting to Houston, but in every aspect of her life. Stuck, or even both. And I have a fear of elevators. So I'm worried, very worried, to be doing this. Yet, despite the fear, the pain, and the uncertainty, our hero's spirit remains unbroken. She's driven by the dream of a better future, not just for herself, but for her kids. This journey, with all its ups and downs, is a testament to her strength, her courage, and her unwavering determination. Here's to new beginnings to fighting the good fight, and to the endless pursuit of happiness and health. I can't walk in without the tank. I'm not riding the elevator.